the storyteller which we are going to learn today that is also one of the masterpieces written by Saki aunt is actually pissed off she doesn't want to answer any more questions because she wanted to be at peace continuously she is going on answering would the people have saved her even if she was not so good that was the question he asks him so what aunt used to do is she had built lot of moral values in children by telling very good stories Hello everyone. I am Dr. Shalini, professor of English, Vidyashram First Grade College, the Temple of Excellence, Mysore. Today we are here to discuss about one of the prose parts that is prescribed by University of Mysore for first sem BCom. This is a short story written by Saki. Saki is the pen name. His actual name is H H Munro. The name of the author is H H Munro. So let us. just peep into what we are going to learn in this session let us just peep in to know what we are going to learn in today's module so we are going to learn about the author and also the summary of the whole text okay so let us begin our session now so the first thing we are going to understand is about the author so we all now by now we just know the name of the author that is saki okay saki was the pen name and his actual name was hector hugh munro okay so his pen name was saki okay so he was born in british burma british burma is nothing but a part of burma that was occupied burma is the name of a, a country so burma that was occupied by the britishers he was born during that time he was born in that part okay so he was actually a british writer okay so he had come to burma like he was uh, born in that place wherein britishers had occupied burma but he was a british writer by origin so his works actually satirize this edwardian society what is meant by a satire first we need to know that okay satire is actually more or less equal to the word sarcasm so nowadays you use sarcasm right so it is more or less equal to that but it is not the same satire is used to uh, create awareness in people okay so this is a this is an art of making fun of the society which is used by the authors poets and all and they make fun of the society they make fun of uh, the practices that are there in the society in order to create awareness in them okay so he was an author who used to write that way he used to write satires about the edwardian society edwardian society means the society wherein there were lot of rich people they didn't even care about the poor like so it was like um, more or less equal to that uh, similar to that uh, victorian society okay so this was the scenario he used to write satires about the edwardian society he has written lot of uh, famous works so these are few of them these are few famous works that are written by h h munro or saki okay so the interlopers gabriel ernest the toys of peace and the storyteller so the storyteller which we are going to learn today that is also one of the masterpieces written by saki So there are very few characters in this story. I will not go through the whole text, but I'll just give you the summary of it. So the setting of the story is in a train. So the whole story takes place in a train railway carriage. So you can say it is one. It, it takes place in one of the compartments of the train. So this train is traveling to Temple Combi. Okay, so that is a place. So here the author tries to satirize the. practices that are there in the society as he is his practice is he uses that the same thing in this story also okay so there are very few characters in this story it is very easy for you to remember it is easy for you to understand so it's a very short crisp kind of a story very easy to understand directly touches the heart of the reader okay the phrase directly touches the heart of the reader by this phrase i don't mean that it is emotional okay it is actually it makes fun of the society like how people used to make choices and also all these are uh, very intricately blended into the story okay so let us start with this story now okay so the story starts uh, like uh, the setting is given and the scenario is just explained to you so it is a hot summer day okay so hot summer day summer occupies a very important position in uh, british uh, 
um, writings okay so that is because the most of the time it is uh, cold there so they want summer they enjoy summer okay so that is what they are uh, that, that is mentioned here okay so it was a hot summer day and the setting setting means the uh, place where the uh, incident takes place or the event takes place okay so here three small children are there they are traveling with their aunt in a railway carriage so there are three small children okay one boy two girls so there are three children there and they are traveling with their aunt so in the story it is named as aunt no name is given for that the name of the aunt is not mentioned but the name of names of children are mentioned there okay but name of the aunt is not mentioned so let's mention that as let us uh, go about uh, with the name of aunt only so aunt is there there are three children one boy and two girls it happens in a railway carriage as i said okay so the whole incident takes place in a railway carriage means a compartment of the train so here when the author uh, is writing the story he refers to this the compartment of the train as a car okay so this railway carriage he refers to as car car of the train he says so you have to understand that as a compartment okay so let us go further children you know how are children okay so the children they uh, kept on asking questions to the aunt you know small children right they are very inquisitive inquisitive means very curious okay since children were very curious to know what is happening around them they are going on asking questions okay so they are very curious to know what is going on inside the carriage what is going on outside so their mind is continuously working something or the other is going on in their minds so they were going on asking questions to aunt also aunt is actually pissed off she doesn't want to answer any more questions because she wanted to be at peace continuously she is going on answering she just wanted them to stay quiet she is trying too hard to keep them quiet but that is not happening at all because they are going on asking questions aunt tries to keep them quiet by telling them a story she uh, comes across various uh, questions before she could start telling a story uh, there are various questions that are asked like there was a girl who in among the children only there was a girl who was going on singing only one line of the poem it was like somebody has given a bet to her she has taken a bet with somebody and she is going to win the bet so the same line she is going on repeating she is not continuing the uh, poem also okay it was it was like she is not going to stop at all never ending so that was one side and the on, on the other side one of the boys that is his name is cyril so he goes on banging the like he just hits the seat of the this one railway carriage there the dust just flies so that is also irritating there okay so aunt is too much irritated there so what she says just come and sit near the window she says so he comes sits near the window very reluctantly the word reluctantly means it is an adverb it actually means without willing like he was not willing to come there okay so he was not uh, uh, he didn't want to come there but still since aunt calls he comes there and sits so reluctantly meaning without uh, his wish okay so he comes there he sees outside the window then he asks about questions about few sheep there okay so few sheep were there were lot of sheep bulls cows and all outside the uh, window like as they were passing on the fields okay so about that also they start asking question so aunt could not control she calls them for a story okay so aunt might have already told them many stories which was uninteresting for them they were all disinterested in the story there which the aunt was uh, telling all these days so here also they thought the same kind of story might be coming up okay so they came she starts an unconventional story unconventional means a kind of uh, not so interesting story okay they were not at all interested in that story as i said simply she starts telling a story so just to capture the interest of the children she just wanted them to be quiet so she just want some story she starts telling okay without any preparation she just uh, starts telling the story then what happens there was an unknown man also so unknown man in the story so he is called as a he is named as a bachelor so there is no name given to that but the only name that is given by the author is the bachelor so there was a bachelor also in the carriage so he was just watching the lady telling the story so the aunt starts telling a story uh, she talks about uh, some girl like once upon a time like that only she tells then what happens uh, she, when all of a sudden aunt experiences uh, like aunt had to face a question 
So then even the bachelor, the question which the child had got, the same question even the bachelor had got in his mind. So as soon as the child asked the question, aunt was uh, like, she did not have any uh, proper uh, answer over there. So she, she just uh, answers him some, she gives him some uh, lame answer. Okay. So all of a sudden what this uh, bachelor does is, uh, he just tells her, you are a very bad storyteller. You don't know how to tell a story. So he just talks just like that. Okay. All of a sudden he gives that comment. So aunt was very uh, surprised. She was uh, shocked. She didn't expect that comment. She was taken aback. What she does, she, di she didn't want to give up in front of that bachelor. Okay. She just uh, gave him a challenge. What does she give? She tells the bachelor, like uh, since the bachelor points out the flaws in the story, what she does is she asks him to tell a story. Okay, so she tries to tell him it is very difficult for uh, anybody to tell a story to a child or to children. So why don't you try telling a story? That's what she says. So now the ball is in his court. Okay, so all these children, they were first of all disinterested with this aunt's story. Now they expected something different from this bachelor. They all uh, just turned towards the bachelor asking him to tell a story. Okay, so they just ask him, no, you tell a story, you tell a story. So they just start pestering him to tell a story. So aunt is very happy. She is like, uh, she has won the battle or something like that. So she just uh, tells, just put the puts the ball in bachelor's court and she just keeps watching. So she was like, what will this bachelor do? What will this person do? How will he tell a story? Okay, she was just waiting for a chance to uh, offend that bachelor because he has offended her by pointing out few flaws in the story. Okay, so let us see what happens next. So he starts telling a story. He also begins the same way once upon a time. So this way only he begins a story. Okay, so the conventional way only the um, previous story how it was like, like that only it starts. Okay, children were actually disinterested. They did not want to listen to the story, but somehow they start listening. Okay, so what happens? Starts telling a story about a girl named Bertha. Okay, so Bertha was a very good girl. So you know what happened? He starts explaining about this girl Bertha. Okay. She was good. She had won three gold medals based on three categories. One is to be neat and tidy all the time, to say the truth always, to complete, uh, say the truth and be disciplined. Okay. So then uh, to complete the work always on time. So there were three categories in which she has won three gold medals. Okay. She used to wear the gold medals always and used to roam around. So he uses the word horribly good for Bertha. So he uses this word horribly good. Okay. So why does he use this word horribly good? Usually you don't consider this horrible with good. Okay. You don't use it. Right. Horrible. Like the taste was horrible. You say you use it when you want to talk something negative about it. But here the author, the storyteller, the bachelor uses this word horribly good. So they were attracted. So uh, they were like a kind of spark of interest kindles, gets kindled in the children's mind. So here she had won through three gold medals for being good, he says. So that time Cyril says, yes, she was horribly good. So he repeats the same word over here. Okay. So that time the author, the bachelor knows, yes, the story has struck the mind of the children. So now he has used this word horribly good again. So he is talking about her goodness. There comes an incident where um, uh, children ask questions to the bachelor also. So there is an incident about this Bertha. So Bertha was being attacked by a bull one day. So what happened since she was good, she was running and the bull was running behind her was being chased. Okay, she was being chased by a bull. So that time people ran fast and somehow saved her. Okay, so this was the incident. He just wanted to show how good she was. Okay. So that time, one of the children, he asked a question, that is the boy who was there, he asked a question, would the people have saved her even if she was not so good? That was the question he asks him. Now, the aunt was very happy. Somehow the question has come. But the uh, this one bachelor said uh, that depends on the goodness. Okay, since she was good only, they saved her. But if she was not good, they wouldn't have ran so fast, he says. Okay, he doesn't say that they wouldn't have saved her. But he says they wouldn't have ran so fast. That means you should understand that had they not ran fast, she would have been 
killed so they wouldn't have saved her okay so this way he answers the uh, questions very in a tricky way so then what happens so here in between you just need to understand so there was a prince in the like she was uh, very good right so some our the even the prince comes to know about her goodness so he wanted to give her an award okay so he decides he has to call her to the uh, garden which he has for as a reward for her goodness he will allow her to take a stroll in the park weekly once okay so that is what he decided so uh, what happens here is uh, here the this one the storyteller that is the bachelor he actually talks about the park okay so he just lets the children imagine how the park is okay so what he tells there was no uh, clock and there was no flowers there were a lot of pigs so everything he says so very trickily he answered one question here in a very intelligent way so let me just tell you so he did not have clocks and he uh, did not have flowers also he says there okay so what happens is one of the children uh, they ask a question somewhere there so aunt was very happy again so again a question has come up okay so then uh, the children ask about the death of the prince there was a curse uh, here in the uh, to the prince so the prince did not have any clock in his palace that is what he says so cyril asks okay so cyril or one of the children okay so they ask the uh, this one the bachelor how did the prince die so this one the bachelor without even delaying a moment he just tells them the prince has not died so we do not know whether the curse has come true or not okay so in this way the uh, bachelor goes on answering all the questions very cleverly aunt was really surprised to see the way he has created interest okay so even she was fascinated by the way in which the story is being told okay so then what happens he also tells about the that there was no flowers in the garden so bertha had promised her aunt like the girl who when she came to have a stroll in the park she had told her aunt that she is not going to pluck any flowers but here she says there are no flowers at all so now the children ask why there are no flowers so the bachelor says the prince was given a choice whether to have pigs in the garden or flowers okay anybody for that matter wouldn't have chosen pigs they would have chosen flowers only even you for that matter if you are given a choice like in your garden would you have a pig or would you have flowers you'll have flowers only right but this prince was somewhat weird he was different he was unique he had few pigs in the garden okay so to eat those pigs there was a wolf that used to come so next what happened so she was very good she was called to the prince's garden to have a stroll as a mark for as an award for her goodness okay so she was allowed to take a walk now then when she was strolling there was a wolf that came up okay so there was a wolf that came into the garden now she asks yeah here there is an important question we must uh, note down which were which was asked by the children the children asked what colors were the sheep there okay so he tells all colors okay white with black spots black with white spots so all combinations he gives and he just lets them imagine for some time so that they are quiet for some time so his objective is being met isn't it the main objective the main reason why he is telling a story was to keep the children quiet so now that is happening so then what happens uh, bertha had worn a white clean white dress that so that dress was visible from far away also so wolf saw that and wolf came to attack okay so wolf came and she just runs as fast as she can and hides behind the bush so the bushes and all they were so thick that the wolf started sniffing but here when she hid behind the bush it was not able to sniff also sniffing you know when dogs walk somewhere no they just smell continuously smell and uh, they walk right so that is called as sniffing okay so wolf also comes sniffing for bertha but she hides behind the bush somehow the wolf was not able to reach bertha so it was about to go back okay but what happens due to fear she was just trembling okay so she was shivering so by that time the three medals which she was wearing they were clinking they were touching each other and they were making that clinking sound so you know metals touch each other and you get a clinking sound right so that type of sound was being made by this bertha's medals also 
So at that time, wolf could guess where Bertha was. It just jumped into the bush and it the wolf eats away Bertha completely. It just gobbles Bertha inside. Okay, so finally Bertha is no more. Whatever was left was the three medals, the shoes, everything. Okay, so only those were left. Bertha is no more. Okay, she just thought when she was hiding behind the bush, she was thinking, I shouldn't have been so good then I wouldn't have come here. So she was just thinking about her goodness. Okay, the wrong part of her being good. Why has she been so good? So that is what had come to her mind. So uh, all this happens, then the wolf eats Bertha up. So then what happens? The children actually love the story. The children say, this is the most interesting story that I have heard. This is the most beautiful story I have ever heard in my life. That was the uh, phrase told by the children. But when they heard the story of the aunt, they had told, this is the stupidest story I have ever heard. Okay, so what aunt used to do is she had built a lot of moral values in children by telling very good stories. But what did this bachelor do? He did the opposite. Okay, so the story he told was, it was uh, kind of unconventional. Okay, so actually um, speaking, this is actually a meaningless story. Okay, meaningless in the sense, you cannot uh, say somebody not to be good. Isn't it? In any story, in any moral story you speak, you tell uh, tell to children, it will be like, yes, you have to be good. You have to do good. Like that only the stories will be made. But here she feels it is an improper story. Aunt tells him, what kind of story have you told? When he, when he is getting down from the train, she asks him, what kind of story have you told? Why have you undone the values that I have built in children? Don't you feel that children will start feeling that uh, we should not be so good? Isn't it? So this is what is going on. Now the aunt goes on asking him. Okay, she questions him twice or thrice. Then he tells, the objective was to keep the children quiet. Okay, so he was successful in keeping the children quiet for 10 minutes. So that is what he has done. I don't know what it is. Whatever you say that doesn't, uh, I don't mind that. Okay, whatever was to be done, that is done. Now your intention is your uh, aim is fulfilled. Okay, so now you just get on the train and go, he says. So now he was also thinking all this while they have heard my story, they will go on asking the aunt for such a story in public. So whenever they will travel, they will ask aunt to tell such a story only. Okay. Because the children told that when they compared the story to the aunt's story. Okay. So one of the children uh, says that aunt's story, the ending was not at all good. It was the most stupidest story. But compared to this, when he tells about, when he talks about this story, the child says, this is the most beautiful story and it started badly. He talks about all the goodness in Bertha. That means the story started badly, the child says, but it ended beautifully. Okay, it ended very well, he says. So this kind of thrilling ending is was what the children were looking for. Okay, so the storyteller was actually successful in uh, making the children quiet for some time. Okay, so this is the summary of this story, the storyteller. So here they might ask you about the characters also. Which are the characters here? There are only four characters. So they are the aunt, Cyril, bachelor and Bertha that you would be asked for. Okay, Cyril is the one who questions a lot. Okay, so that's why he about him also you may be asked but the other two girls who are there they are also the characters there but their conversation is not too much in the story okay so they don't have much of a part being played in the story so that will not be asked for the character sketching they might ask about character sketching of these people also so whenever you're writing about character sketching you just need to write about you read the story so you need to write about the physical traits first okay so whenever you're uh, design you're uh, writing about a character you need to write about the physical appearance first okay write about the physical traits or physical appearance first okay so then you will talk about their character character in the sense what kind of person they were okay so the mindset 
okay so the mindset of the person you will be writing suppose we are writing about the aunt okay so let us just talk about one of the characters so others you can write it yeah let us talk about the aunt okay so she was very old you can say okay old in the sense not too old it is given as uh, she was aged okay so she has three children not her own okay you can just say old not too much aged so she was old and she was not patient at all okay so about her physical traits not much is given over there like she is was she tall was she stout so that is not given there so you need not have to concentrate much on that so then we are also told that she was impatient how do you know she was impatient how do you decide she was impatient she never used to answer the questions of the children properly okay she was just getting pissed off by the way children were behaving okay so that doesn't mean that she doesn't have patience at all but they might be troubling her too much due to which she may not like questions she may not like to answer questions so she might have become impatient okay so that can be there and you can also write about how she could manage the children how she could manage the uh, show or manage the children in the train so about that also you can write a little so here when you are writing that depends on how much marks is uh, being uh, uh, awarded for that so if you are writing for lesser marks you just have to write uh, very in a plain way in a superficial way you need not have to go deep into that suppose they are asking you for 10 marks then you need to write the incidents like wherever suppose you are writing about impatience of aunt so you can write about two or three places where she has to answer the questions and how she answered it back so like that you can write whenever you are writing about the aunt okay Cyril you can say he was a child and he is very inquisitive curious you can use that word since he is a child he is curious then he was going on asking questions he asks questions about whatever he says he is going on asking questions about that so that you can write about Cyril okay so bachelor yes he was a mute spectator in the um, railway carriage he was just waiting for a chance to ask aunt he was just waiting for a chance to counter aunt for her storytelling okay so later on how he was very tactfully uh, he answered the questions okay so about that you can write when you're writing about the bachelor so bachelor was uh, we know nothing about bachelor other than he was young okay so he was young he was very tactful he was very clever and he was very intelligently answering the questions asked by the children so that you can ask you you can just say he was very smart enough to answer the questions of the children okay so then we have bertha we already know about bertha isn't it she was too good she was horribly good you can also use that word okay so she was too good and the author uses the word horribly good to refer to her goodness okay you can also write about the three medals which she has won so about that also you can write okay then you in the end you can write how she um, had to pay for because she was too good okay so these are the things you have to write when you're writing about bertha so the possible questions you're going to get from this uh, story are like character sketch or you may have to answer uh, the one mark questions and also few five mark questions which we will be discussing in the class later okay so this was what we learned today the summary of this story the storyteller okay so this storyteller is a story about a bachelor who, uh, who tells a story to the children just to keep them quiet. So without any bad intention, he just tells this story, but that turns out to be something else. So this was all about the storyteller. Let us meet again in another more interesting session. Okay, so till then, keep learning any part of the lecture you have not understood. Just go back and watch the session again. It will be clear to you. So any doubts, you're welcome to ask during the class. So let us meet again with another more interesting session. Till then, keep learning. Take care. See you. Bye-bye.